So I had an idea. I get a lot of um, emails and Facebook messages and whatnot for help with uh, with tracing images. And the biggest problem that I end up finding with the images that people want traced is the image itself. They get frustrated because they can't make it work in Inkscape. Um, but usually the problem is is before you even get to Inkscape. Um, so I am going to uh, show you how I find an image if I'm looking for something to trace in Inkscape to make a, a design with. Um, the first step is finding the image. So I go to Google. Um, here's my Google page and Easter is in a few weeks. Actually Easter is next week. So I am going to do a bunny. Try to find a bunny clip art. I always add the word clip art because if you just add bunny, if you just do bunny, you are going to get a whole bunch of pictures of bunnies. Granted, they're absolutely gorgeous. Look at that one. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, nothing that's going to be of any use to you. So you always add the word clip art at the end of it, and then you get what you actually were intending to get. Um, first things first, you don't want a picture that's got shading, like, like too much shading like this that's realistic. Um, even something now, if I look at something like this, the problem you're going to, it can be done, it's really not a big deal, but something to watch for is you see this shade here? When you trace that in Inkscape, that's going to be a different color. Even though it looks like shading, that's a, that's another shade of pink and another shade of it instead of white, it's gray. So you're going to have to deal with all of those extra layers, getting rid of them and whatnot, um, which like I said, it won't be a problem, but especially if you're new to using Inkscape, it's just going to add a level of difficulty that you probably don't need. Um, see, something like this is adorable. This would be a monster to try to do in Inkscape um, because of all the shading. Let me just show you what happens if I can... My Inkscape has this weird little bug that I can't get rid of. Sometimes when I copy and paste images into it, it just shuts down. So if you see that happen, that's why. So if I take this and go to Path, Trace bitmap. Oh, I had this huge from something else I was doing, sorry. I go to colors. I always take off smooth and add remove background. If I start with eight scans, that's eight different colors just as a base point. If you look at this, it's, it's kind of a mess. Um, you can drop this down to less colors and it just sort of all mushes together. So you almost need all these extra colors and then you're going to have to weed through them all. This is 12 scans. That's a lot to be dealing with for this. If I try to do anything with this, if I double click on it, I ungroup them. Look at these layers that you got. These are pretty useless. So you're going to spend a insane amount of time trying to trace this image. What I would end up doing is using these kind of layers, these, these ones that don't have a lot in them, and try to work with them. But yeah, this would not be fun at all. Um, so that's why I don't do images like that. If you try... Um, so like, this is cute. This could definitely be done. It'd be, it's a decent number of layers, but this is Thumper. It wasn't really what I was looking for, but let's try Thumper quick. Um, trace bitmap. We don't need 12 layers, I don't think. What I would do here is start going down in my number of scans until I can't deal with how much I lose anymore. See there, I lost the pink. I kind of want the pink, but let's see what happens. You can always fill it in. <coughs> Probably be better off with something like this, just coloring it in myself, honestly. Probably, that's a lot of layers still, but. So this is my SVG. If I ungroup it, see now that layer is actually pretty useful. That's the gray layer. Tan layer, maybe not so much. That one doesn't look like we're going to be able to do a whole lot with it. But the gray layer will be helpful. I don't know about that one either. Um... See, I would want to fill this in, but what you got to watch for is you see here, if I zoom in, if I hit control and scroll in, you'll zoom in. See where this is broken right here? 
you're not going to be able to color in the tail unless you fix that. That's a pain. You can do it, but it's kind of a pain. If you're looking for something simple and quick, that's going to cause you cause you a little bit of heartache. Um, so hopefully, if you're lucky, you get a layer that's actually complete, but it doesn't look like we have one with this. So we would have to complete that. Um, actually, this one looks like it might be closed. Alright, what I would actually probably do here, get rid of all these... Whoops. Control Z undoes when you go too far. What I would actually do is probably take this, put it on top of this one. If you go, you group them both together, just drag a box around them. Go to Object, Align and Distribute. I align them vertically and horizontally, and now they're back to being right on top of each other. Zoom in a little bit, and then you can try coloring some stuff in. Use your paint bucket, except I need the uh, need the colors, the original colors, and I think I deleted it. <laughs> I did. Um, yeah, you can try coloring some stuff in here. Like, see, it still won't color in because it tells me that it's uh. Actually, it did. Yeah, it did color it in. Okay, so you have the tail. Um, but you could go in and color this in. This um, I just wanted to show you the image. I'm not going to get into tracing that one right now. Um, but so that one could be done. It's a little bit more work, but it can be done. If you find something... The other thing to really, really watch for when you're looking for an image is the size of the image. You can check the size either right on here. If you look under my mouse, it says 450 by 371. See this one right next to it? it says 1383 by 2254. They look the same. They both look pretty crisp. But if you bring this one into Inkscape versus this one, this one's going to be a lot easier because it's got a lot more resolution. Um, you won't get fuzzy lines and all kinds of stuff like that. The bigger the picture, the better. Um, 450, but like 500 by 500 is kind of medium. That's like middle of the road. You'll see that a lot. If it's a really basic image, that'll work fine. Um, if it's something with a lot of detail, that's not going to work. Um, you can also, if you click on them once, right under it here, it'll give you the size there. That's that's kind of small. Um, trying to find something relatively simple would be fun to do. You can always use a coloring book page and color them in. small. Um, this one is huge. That's a 1500 by 1159. Alright, so if I take this, it's not a cute image, but it's kind of good for what I'm doing. Alright, so if I have this image right here, we trace it. How many layers can we get this puppy down to? See there, I just lost a whole bunch of color. We don't really want to go that far. So we're going to go with six. I hit OK. So now I have two images. The one on top so yeah, you can see through the white, the, there's no white, it's clear. That's the SVG, that's what you want. This is your JPEG, you don't really want that, but I leave it there just to use for colors and whatnot if you need them. Um, if you double click on this image, you'll break apart all the layers, and you can see what kind of layers it, oh that's a really nice one, that's a good coloring book image. So these are the images that you ended up with, these are all our layers. If I hit Control Z, I undo that. I can put them all back together. That's perfect. Um, what I would do is color in the individual pieces and then make a black background for this. That's probably the easiest way to do it. I personally don't like the blue bunny, but so we'll change that. But if you make sure you're not clicked on anything. See right now I have this box around here. It's selected. I don't want anything selected. So click anywhere else on the screen so nothing is selected. Get your paint fill bucket. And now you can see if you hover over that, it says fill bounded areas. They have got to be bounded. They have to be completely contained. If there's any breaks in your lines like I was showing you before, um, you can't color them in anymore. So always watch that. But So we're going to color this bunny in. And we're going to make it... I want to make it lavender. I really don't like the blue. <laughs> so we're going to make a lavender bunny. We'll color all the blue pieces in. 
just click on them. If, see this little one? I'm going to zoom in. If I hit control and scroll, I can zoom in. And there's that one. Now if I hit the selector button up here, zoom back out a little, and hit shift and click on all the pieces that I just colored in. See them all highlighting? You can see the little boxes getting added. I think I have them all. If I hit control plus plus, that unions them together. So there's my, my bunny layer. Um, we're going to do the carrot orange. Again, select off of everything. Hit the paint bucket. Let's find orange down here. There's orange. We'll make our carrot orange. Hit the selector. Hold shift. And click on them all. Control plus plus. Now we have a carrot. We'll do his ears and his nose. I guess we'll do those pink. Ears, ears, nose. Shift, click them all, control plus plus. Control plus plus, by the way, I do everything. I hate using the, the menu options with the mouse. It's easier to use the keyboard shortcuts for me, but whichever way is easier. Um, path, union. If you see right next to it here, it says control plus plus. That's like in design space the equivalent of weld. It makes them all one path. The nodes are all together. It can't be separated anymore. Um, we need his, um, I'm going to make this stuff all white, but we need his little bunny tail and his belly and his feet and his teeth and we're going to make them white, but the problem is if I make them white, you won't see them against the white background. So I'm just going to pick a random color. We'll make them yellow for the moment and then I change them to white later just so that I can see them and I make sure I get them. We select each of those. Control plus plus. Bring that one over here. We need this green little thingy, little leafy part of the of the carrot. So we'll find a green. Whoops. And I see that I had this selected. Did you see what happened? I still had the white selected, so when I hit the green, it changed to green. If I undo that, that's fine. Filled that in green. Now we have our little green thing there. Do I have everything except for the black? I think I have everything. Sometimes you'll find later that you don't. Not a biggie, but okay. So these are all my colored pieces. Now I want the background piece that's going to sit behind it all. So what I'm going to do is get rid of all of these layers. Actually, I'm going to save that one for the moment just in case. That's the one I want rid of all this. You, and you would take this, you don't always end up with this nice clean um, image, but when you do it really helps. So if we click on that, we go to path, break apart, and you see the whole thing turn black. If there were any parts in here that weren't bounded, if there were any breaks in those lines, this wouldn't work. And then you have a lot more work on your hands, but it worked so all is well with the world. Now I union them back together, control plus plus or union. And now, this button right here is the node editor. If I click this, you'll see this is the cuts that your machine is actually going to make. Every one of these little squares is where your, your blade is going to touch down by your machine. If you, have, if you look at this and it's like solid little squares and there's like 8 million points, you're going to have problems when you bring it into design space. You're going to get that shockwave crash error and all kinds of stuff where it'll tell you the image is too big. There's all kinds of stuff that'll happen. Um, so that's something else to watch. There is a way around that. If I wasn't... Let me see what will happen. I can always undo it. If you have something that's a ton of cuts, you can go to Path, Simplify, and it'll smooth them out for you, but sometimes it doesn't do a good job and it oversimplifies it and you lose too much definition. But we can try it. So we hit Simplify, and now look what we have. A lot less cuts. So if you have an image that was too complex, that's how you can simplify it. Um, let's see if that's going to work. I might have to make that bigger again. That actually would work. Oh, you know what? I needed white space there, and I joined those all together. You see that? I lost that white space. Okay. Best way to handle that would probably be... This is a totally on-the-fly video, by the way. I had no idea what I was going to be doing. <laughs> so this is real life. This is what happens. You encounter things you did not expect. 
Um, I'm going to try to slice this out of it and see if I can... Or I could just use this blue layer. I could do that too. That might be easier. Um, this blue layer might be the best thing to use. But, let me try this. If I put him here, see what happens. If I can get that white shape. Whoops. Get out of here. If I drag a box around both of those layers. And I try difference. See what, ah, that didn't work at all. Alright, try sending this one to the bottom, maybe. So that the blue one's on top. But now... If I difference them, I think I'm, I don't think this is what I want. Yeah, that's not going to work at all. Alright, we're just going to use the blue layer, because it's easier. So now we have this cute little layer here. And we do, however, want that tail filled in, and we want this gone. So first of all, if I double-click this, you'll see all the nodes. You can just drag a box around all of those, hit delete, and they're gone back out a little bit. I want that tail filled in though, though. So I'm going to go back, make sure I'm not selected on anything. I'm going to try this and see if it works. Just pick a color. I'm going to fill that in. Now if I select that and the bunny and union those together, now the tail is gone, but I still have the other spaces that I do want. So now I have my outer layer. We're going to turn that black. You don't have to fill it in. You don't have to do anything with it. You just click on the black and it turns black. Now, we're going to take all of this, and we're going to stick it right on top of there. And you have to probably rearrange your pieces a little and whatnot, and make them exactly where they belong. If they're not right, whatever, that's fine. This yellow, if you remember, I wanted white, so now I just highlight it, click white, and now it's white again. So now, this was my original picture. This is why, obviously, you make the bunny whatever color you want. The big, bright purple bunny is a little weird. But that's how I would trace that, um, that image. And that's also how I would find images. So you want to look for things that are as big as you can get them, things that don't have a ton of shading in them, things that aren't going to be too many lines to deal with. Um, I don't see anything real sketchy. Sometimes you'll see things that are, that are like, it looks like a hand-sketched image, kind of. Um, and that just turns into a nightmare. So hopefully that helps a little bit on the tracing side of things. See, like this, this would be ugly. It's, it's, it's 593 by 370, middle of the road size-wise, but I can see already looking at this, this would be hell if you bring this over to to Inkscape, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. First of all, you have areas over here that are not bounded, so you couldn't color it in to begin with. And you have all of these little tiny dots in here that your machine would pick up as separate cuts. So it would just make it insane. Um, so you have to, when you look at these images, you have to look at them sort of as your machine would look at them. Instead of saying, well, it looks pretty simple. It's black and white. It's, it's relatively, you know, it's not itty bitty. It's not like a thumbprint seems like it should work. It's really not going to. Um, but that kind of comes from practice. After you look at these things a hundred times, you'll start to see which ones are going to are gonna work out for, for the best and which ones aren't. Um, so hopefully that helps. If you have any questions, give me a shout and uh, we'll talk to you soon.